Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today we've got a practice question related to the neuromuscular and nervous system. So as you know, as we go through this podcast, we go around the loop as we go through each of the body systems on the NPTE. Today is no different. We'll be talking through the neuromuscular and nervous system. So according to the latest content outline update, there's somewhere around 40 questions here. So 39 to 48 questions related to the neuromuscular and nervous systems. So as we've talked about before, it is in the podcast format, it's a little bit difficult to do a scenario-based item simply because you have to have the full patient chart of data and then answer questions about that. We do that in our VIP courses as well as our crash courses and premium courses. So be sure to check all of that out at ptfinalexam.com. We've got all the courses you need in order to dominate on exam day. Plus, if you are involved in your university in any capacity, uh, you, so as a class president or faculty member or anything, uh, we do on-campus courses. We do full university contracts, uh, ways to get fabulous discounts if you get your whole cohort together. So be sure to reach out, go over to ptfinalexam.com slash contact to find out more information there about all of the course offerings that we have. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and talk about our practice question today. So we'll go ahead and queue this one up. As per our usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about the answer together. All right, in which of the following positions will a patient with a C5 Asia impairment scale A spinal cord injury most likely develop a joint contracture? In which of the following positions will a patient with a C5 Asia impairment scale A spinal cord injury most likely develop a, a joint contracture? Option one, elbow extension and supination. Two, elbow extension and pronation. Three, elbow flexion and supination, and four, elbow flexion and pronation. So again, the question is, we've got, a, uh, in which of the following positions will a patient with a C5 Asia impairment scale A spinal cord injury, are they most likely to develop a joint contracture? So in this case, we're talking about a spinal cord injury, C5 Asia A, this means a complete spinal cord injury, indicating that there are there's no sacral segment sparing, no sensory in the sacral segments, S4 and S5. Uh, all this also indicates, so when we name or have the neurological level identified for a spinal cord injury, it is identified as the lowest functioning level, meaning that everything below that level is impaired to a great degree. And so in this case, a C5 spinal cord injury indicates that C5 is functional, but everything C6 and below is not functional to, to some degree. And usually it's quite significant. Again, you'd require more information to know the precise, uh, precise function on each of those spinal segments below. But generally speaking, the neurologic level is the lowest functional level. Everything else below is impaired. So in this case, we have a C5 injury indicating C5 is intact. And so as you recall, the C5 dermatome and myotome, we're talking about uh, the ability to abduct the arm as well as some elbow flexion. So the Asia impairment scale, the American Spinal Injury Association impairment scale, they indicate that C5 is part of elbow flexion. Now, just so you know, this is a frustrating part of neuro, and this was the same for me, that there is some crossover between some of these levels. It's not quite as cut and dried as we'd like. So like McGee and Dutton, they both indicate C6 is involved in elbow flexion. And the American Spinal Injury Association indicates C5 is elbow flexion. So which one is it? Well, the truth is it's a little bit of both because the musculocutaneous nerve, which innervates the elbow flexors, that's what it gets input from C5 and C6. So I digress. In this case, we have a C5 spinal cord injury. So what position will they most likely develop a joint contracture? Well, the correct answer is elbow flexion and supination. This is because at the C5 level, so again, C5 indicating that C5 is functional, the elbow flexors would, would have some strength to them, whereas the elbow extensors would not. So they would lack or be unable to move into elbow extension and pronation. So the unopposed action of the elbow flexors is most likely to lead them into an elbow flexion contracture. And so this question is a mix and match style question where we have elbow extension or flexion or supination and pronation. And the correct answer here is elbow flexion and supination together. This is because the biceps brachii, the strong elbow flexor is also a strong supinator of the forearm. And so therefore the unopposed action of the elbow flexors, the biceps brachii, again, this is C5 coming through the musculocutaneous nerve, is most likely to result in a flexion, 
supination elbow contracture. These other answer options, elbow extension, supination, elbow extension, pronation, uh, it's unlikely you would be in an elbow extension contracture, again, because you don't have any elbow extensors, uh, don't have any functional use of your elbow extensors. And so therefore, you would have the unopposed use of the elbow flexors. So we know that it has to be elbow flexion. And then as far as supination or pronation, the biceps brachii is a strong supinator. And so therefore, the patient is most likely to be in a, an elbow flexed and supinated posture. And so then you as the PT, you get to often use either uh, stretching. You can also, as a part of the inter interdisciplinary team, try to try to reduce the joint contracture by reducing muscular activity. In, in the case, if there was spasticity or hypertonia, uh, in any case, you'll want to help stretch that patient out. A lot of times this is done via serial casting. So this means that you cast the patient with about seven degrees of stretch in the cast, and then you cast them again and again over the course of weeks so that you can improve the range of motion at the elbow. And frankly, this will be something they'll have to work on their entire lives, just simply because it's not, not changing, that the C5 elbow flexion contracture is most likely to persist unless you have direct intervention trying to, to accommodate that. So uh, as far as intervention strategies here, again, lots of stretching and then adaptive equipment. They do have some, some adaptive equipment that it can hook onto the, the hand and forearm. And you would want to calibrate that accordingly to the, according to the position that the patient presents in. Again, you will try to target that and improve their range of motion, but it could be that you accommodate or compensate for that with assistive devices so that they can more easily manipulate the, the wheelchair controls or, or more easily more easily manipulate uh, like grooming and feeding utensils, uh, things of that nature. And so there you go. This is the joint contracture position for someone with a C5 spinal cord injury. They are likely to develop it in elbow flexion and supination. All right, so with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. Uh, be sure to check out all the other podcast episodes we have. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit us uh, hit a five hit that five star review button. Uh, it takes just a second over on Google Play, Apple iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is you're listening to this podcast. It really helps. We're trying to get the word out. I hope you have a fabulous day. I know that studying can be quite difficult and arduous, and a lot of you are probably studying for a second or a third time. And again, I just I just want to tell you that it's worth it. It's it's a good goal. This is the great intersection of your interest and your skill. And I would just tell you, lean into it and make it happen. So, all right, we'll catch you all in the next episode. Will Crane fist pumps all around. I'll catch you later. Take care of yourself. Have a happy day.